is Hannah Gordon and I am the female mechanic and um, for this video today I'm going to show you what I've been up to during lockdown. Now in the UK lockdown started about March time and I bought this Porsche 911, it's actually the 996 spec, I bought this back in June time. Now um, I got it really cheap and so what I'm going to do in this video is actually I'm going to take you through what it's like to buy a cheap Porsche. Um, I didn't intend on buying it, it came up and um, I couldn't help myself to be honest. I'm a massive Porsche fan so it was, yeah it didn't take long to think about it. So I bought this Porsche 911 for under £5,000. Now it's scary to think that I've just bought that. I mean it was quite a bit under £5,000 as well. Um, but I do know it's got a gearbox problem. It is the Tiptronic, which is the five-speed automatic gearbox that appears in these cars. Now, if I give you a little bit of background information on the uh, 996, it was the first water-cooled Porsche that um, they made. It was um, after the 993, which was air-cooled, and so this is their first foray into water-cooled engines. Now, this has got the 3.4-litre naturally aspirated engine, about 300 horsepower new. Um, this probably hasn't got the 300 anymore. It has um, all-wheel drive as well. It is a Carrera 4, um, so all-wheel drive. And um, well, basically this is the intro video, and I'm now going to show you what I've got myself into, what I have got for five or under five thousand pounds, and um, yeah, see where we go from there. Okay, I'm just going to take you around the outside of this because, to be honest, the paintwork's pretty good. Nice um, silver colour on this. The lights have have dulled a little bit um, on this, but if we go, paintwork is really good on it, and we've we've managed to get it with this free number plate. Nice private plate on this. <laughs> Read of it as you may. Um, but yeah, to be honest, the paintwork is really good. Uh, the wheels have seen better days, as you can see. Let's have a look. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, they could do the refurb. Uh, looks like it's also gone off road a little bit. Uh, but yeah, definitely refurb. The fronts are worse. Got the drill discs in there. No major rust issues around the arches though, which is really good. Let's go look at the front wheel. So yeah, this has got a bit more corrosion on the wheel, but we are coming up to winter, so I think I will wait until winter's over and then I will um, get these refurbed. Or to be honest, I might just get some new wheels for it. I can't say I particularly like these wheels on it. If we go around to the front, got the, uh, what they call is like the fried egg headlights so i mean it's i wouldn't say it's the prettiest porsche that they've ever made but you can't go wrong for under five thousand pounds really is a thing of beauty actually <laughs> it's a bargain it's a bargain of 2020 let's have a look inside uh, so here's the interior Let's just focus in on that. So fairly, um, could do with a bit of tidying up to be honest. There's the auto gearbox. Nice carpeted on the doors there. It's actually this one's got a sunroof. Um, and we've got a bit of bit of rust around there. The uh, yeah, a little bit of bubble in there. Um, but that's about the only bit of corrosion I can actually see on the vehicle at the moment. Well, we haven't lifted it up in the air yet. But a bit of um, paint's come off these as well. God, where's the focus going? Yeah, see it's chipped. But it's just where you get in and out of the vehicle. Wear on the seat there. But this um, car has done 150,000 miles. So, I have bought a high mileage one, and also, so the button's got stuck there, but oh, this comes off relatively easily, as you can see. So all I've got to do is bring the button back through. That'll be an easy job. 
this is the gearbox so the car isn't going up in gears it's basically staying first second and then it won't go up any further I, I can kind of guess it probably hasn't had a service on the gearbox quite a while so that's probably where we'll start but I'm going to go and lift it up in the air we'll have a look under the car and um, see what we can see see if there's any hidden demons under this I can really have a good look and see what is going on under here. Now this car is, so it was made in 1999, so it's 21 years old. It's no spring chicken and um, there could be some rot under here. We've got problems with the gearbox and um, yeah, it's time to find out if I've got a bit of a lemon. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around it and have a look. Now. This is a rear engine vehicle, all wheel drive because it's Carrera 4. And the, the engine's dry. <laughs> Woo! It's, um, it's looking good. So I can't see any problems with that. Now I know it's had an engine rebuild. This car has done 150,000 miles. It's, it's definitely been um, used, which is great because a lot of people now aren't using their vehicles. It's nice to see. These Porsche 911s go on forever. I've known people 200, 300,000 miles. Okay, this has an engine rebuild, but they just keep going. There's no reason why you should not be driving your car. Um, this is definitely no garage queen, this car. So, And it's got no oil leaks. The engine is dry. Um, there is a bit of a leak from the gearbox, which looks, looks to be possibly a drive shaft seal. Uh, this has had... Um, yeah, so it has had a well, what looks like to be a new gearbox sub pan. So maybe it has had a, a gearbox oil change in the past. Regarding the gearbox, now um, I don't particularly touch automatic gearboxes, I send them away to a specialist. So this will be going away, the car, to a specialist, and we're going to find out what the problem is now. To be honest, I think it could be quite costly, but the amount I paid for this car and to get a gearbox recon, then I'm still pretty well up on it, to be fair. So let's have a look around the rest of it, see what we can see. The MOT is due in November, so uh, it's a few months away. So we'll have a check and see if there's anything that is kind of going to fail on. Tell you what, it all looks really good. I don't know why I'm so surprised. I was thinking maybe for the amount of money I paid for it, I'm going to be in for a nasty surprise. I know the gearbox could be two and a half thousand pounds maybe to fix, but it's not looking too bad. It's not looking too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of rock, so I've just seen up here. There's a tiny bit of rock, so. I'll show you that shortly. Um, but yeah, we're going to look up at the front of the vehicle. Right, okay, I'm at the front of the vehicle here. And like I said, there is a little bit of rot. It's actually kind of got underneath the like paint protection area. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite flaky under there. I've just got covered in it. So what... I'm going to take all that paint covering off, have a proper look and see how bad it's going to be. But the other side is fine. I don't think it's, I think what's happened is it might hit something. You know, there's a fairly low cars. It's probably hit something, dragged that off and now water moisture has got into that. So that's a bit unfortunate. Also at the front, we've got um, quite a mess actually <laughs> on both sides. Uh, both outer CV boots have split. Now it's a really messy job. Basically, these rubber boots keeping a load of grease on the drive shaft. And when they split, grease goes everywhere. So they don't have to be done for the MOT. They won't pass on MOT like that. So a couple more jobs to add to the list. I've got to replace the two CV boots, and I've also got to see about this this hole. But 
I've now checked this car completely over underneath and they're the only problems I've come across. Um, it's, it, it's looking good, it's looking good. Cheap motor in it is best. You know, I've bought a Porsche 911 for the same money could buy a Ford Fiesta for. And um, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the car back down. It'll be going off to the specialist to have a look and see you know, what is going on with the gearbox, because at the moment I can't drive it, it's, yeah, it revs and it doesn't change up, so it's going off to have a look at that, and then that should be gone for a few weeks, and then I'll have it back, I can do the CV boots, look at that hole, and kind of, I'll be doing a journal about how and what it's like to live, or what problems I come up with, basically, with this 996, this is the first Porsche I've ever owned, I've worked on so many of them, and um, it's great to now be able to own one, but um, Porsche ownership is available to everyone. It's, they are such great cars, and yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with this one. So I'm going to lower it back down, get it to this Porsche, um, get it to the gearbox specialist, and see where we go from there. So please follow this journey. It's, it could be one of heartache. <laughs> I could have bought, I don't think I bought 11, I think this is, this will last for years, this car. It's, I've got a few ideas of where I want to take with it, but it's, um, I think I'm going to enjoy my first foray into Porsche ownership. So, yeah, follow the journey, see what happens. We'll come across some problems probably with this. And, um, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can follow my journey with my first 996.